Hello world, it's me. So I interrupt this series of videos on the M80 microcomputer from uh, Miller Technology to bring you a little bit of breaking news and also pose a little trivia question to the Z80 gurus out there. So the breaking news is I received a very pleasant email from actually the founder of Miller Technology Inc. And as it turns out, Miller was in operation up until about uh, 2015, I think he said. And then he retired at that point. But it's a bit of good news, bad news. He did send me this a scan copy of a cell sheet. And the cell sheet had a lot of good information on it. It would have been nice to have when I was a little earlier in working on this board, but uh, there's some good information on this. And, and probably the nice little bit of information is there's a, a better picture of the board. And it looks like this board is a prototype before the silk screening, but we can clearly see that there are jumpers installed for the restart and the interrupt and the wait and the bus request. So that's one thing we can see that on a working board that those jumpers are installed. And the other thing that we can see is there's this resistor down here that we didn't know if it was optional or if it was required. Uh, and it turned out that resistor was required to keep this CMOS inverter uh, to kick it back into play and keep it from latching up. And that resistor is installed on this image. So, you know, that would have saved us a little bit of work if I had even noticed those before. I probably would have just overlooked them anyway. But uh, nonetheless, there's some information in this cell sheet. It's just kind of fun to see a, a cell sheet back from the day. And in, as it turns out they also made a power supply. There was what they called the PS80 power supply. And the nice thing about this cell sheet is it tells us what the power requirements are for this board. And we had already figured out that it took, you know, five volts minus 5 volts and 12 volts for the uh, 2708. But their power supply also has a minus 12 so that you could run a pair of uh, uh, RS-232 drivers with that. One more thing to look for, I guess now I need to put a PS80 power supply on my eBay searches to see if one of these things show up. Another little piece of trivia that's going to come in really handy when I get to uh, doing the monitor and, and, and going through that monitor is a little bit of detail on the monitor. It says it contains 10 high level commands and then it gives a, a sampling of what some of those are. So I know when I'm working on the monitor what I need to be looking for. Of course you can do a reset as you would expect. You can dump memory. You can enter data into memory. You can download a program from another machine on presumably the serial port. You can begin execu execution of a program at an address you can use breakpoints. You can set and clear breakpoints or test any of the I.O. bits. And then it, gets, it says there's also a number of useful routines that are within the monitor. So that will be interesting. I know when I first start working on the monitor, I can go through and see if I can identify those, uh, those commands. And that'll be really useful. As we already knew, it could be 110, 300, or 1200 baud, and the monitor I've got is a 300 baud one. Uh, as we knew before, it contained a uh, uh, tiny basic, and it was Wang's tiny basic, as I presumed. Uh, that was about the only basic that was running on the, those little processes back then. Uh, the other thing that we found out about this is that it comes with a 70 page user's manual, which describes all technical details of the board. And, you know, it's kind of a this is very much a good news, bad news kind of thing. The good news is we got this cell sheet. Uh, and, you know, a little bit of more information and there's, you know, it puts more of the puzzle together. The bad news is that uh, they think this is all the information they have. So, you know, he, he was surprised that he had this left over and he really didn't think there was anything left uh, in terms of documentation on this board. But, you know, that doesn't stop me from holding out hope that somebody somewhere and, and maybe even uh, Mr. Miller uh, from Miller Technologies, the founder is is going to you know dig something up, but uh, it was just interesting to see this cell sheet, and I thought I would share that with you. I do have you know the next couple of videos already recorded, and and I just got to edit them and post them. But I wanted to break in and tell you that I had this information uh, just because I thought it was a bit of a interesting piece of trivia. So speaking of trivia, back to the question I want to pose to the Z80 aficionados. 
If you watch my videos, you know that when I'm bringing up a processor, and even when I'm just writing confidence tests and so forth for processors, I love to have a pin that is under software control. So on the 8080, it's the interrupt enable output pin. On the 8085, I use the SOD. And, and the reason I love these pins is because when I'm first bringing the processor up, it's something that I have software control that I can toggle it. I put in to my initial portion of the code when the processor is starting up a few toggles of this pin. And it, it gives me confidence that yes, the processor is going out and fetching instructions. And we, you know, we know this is fetching instructions if we see the M1, but it tells me that it's fetching my instruction and it's doing exactly what I tell it to do. So I really like to have a output pin that I can toggle at will in the software. And the Z80 actually has a pin that I can toggle at will, and but it's not as, as well known as, you know, things like the interrupt enable or the SOD on the 8085. So my question to the Z80 gurus is, what is that pin? If you if you were looking for a pin that you have software control over that, you know, no matter what else is going on in this processor, there's some period of time in some T state that you know what this pin is and you have software control of this pin. You can set it and you can reset it and so forth. And while it doesn't show up anywhere on the pin configuration, there's one of these pins is one that we have software control over. Now I'll give you a hint. On the Z80, it's, it's not like the interrupt enable or the SOD where you have, where it's a steady state output, where you can set it and you can just measure it with a voltmeter because it's gonna be high or low. With the, with the Z80, it's a little trickier but I will give you a hint and tell you there are two or four T states in every machine instruction where this pin is under software control. And in fact, I'll show you in a later video how one of my favorite applications of this pin is to make a little onboard watchdog LED so that you can have an LED that blinks off and on a little heartbeat so that you can have something that blinks off and on to show you that this processor is, is reading through code and receiving interrupts properly. So I'm not sure, I think I get to that pin in the next video, but it might be the video after that. But at any rate, that will be resolved and answered in a couple of videos forward. But uh, hopefully there's a few people out there at least looking for documentation on this M80 to share and dig up. And unfortunately, it's probably a fairly small pool of people that have one of these or are interested in this board. But nonetheless, I have hope eternal that there'll be more documentation. And if not, I'm close enough now that I could go ahead and probably generate a schematic for it if I wanted to. And if you know what pin we're talking about for this toggling, you can put it down in the comments. You might want to precede that with a spoiler alert. Okay, well, that's it for this video. I appreciate you watching. And if you have any questions or comments, as always, I would like your feedback. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.